Seconds? Oh, we've got lots of... Ooh. <laughs> the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> The makers of Johnson's Wax for Home and Industry present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The holiday season is a time when you want your home as bright and cheerful as you can make it. It's a time that proves, as much as any other, the value of protective wax housekeeping. If your floors, furniture, and woodwork have been waxed regularly with Johnson's Wax, then it's a very easy matter to put on the finishing touches and have that richly polished kind of home that everyone admires. There are many accessories from one end of the house to the other that you can protect and beautify with Johnson's Wax, either paste, liquid, or cream. Your window sills, for example, picture frames, ornaments, lampshades, Venetian blinds, refrigerator. Well, many of you know the list as well as I. When you wax all these surfaces, you protect them because the wax itself takes the wear and the surface underneath is safe. When you go over your house tomorrow, try out several of these extra uses for Johnson's Wax. of the most curious things in the world are the gyroscope, the pyramids, and the squire of 79 Wistful Vista. And if you don't think he's curious, get a load of him sneaking a peek into the hall closet as we join Fibber McGee and Molly. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Look at all these Christmas presents. From Molly to Fibber with love. To Fibber from Molly with best wishes. To the best husband a woman ever had. Wonder who that's for. <laughs> I thought I was the only husband she ever... Oh, well. Uh-oh. An envelope. Do not open before Christmas. Mm, looks like it might be a war bond. Mm -hmm. Flap isn't sealed very tight either. <laughs> if somebody's thumb ever, get, ever got caught in there, it'd flip open like a... Oh, my goodness, it did it. <laughs> Maybe she didn't even mean to seal it. And if it ain't sealed, I suppose it's okay to read it. <sighs> my dear husband, get out of this hall closet and stop snooping. Hmm. <laughs> well, I like that. To think she'd think that I'd think of stooping to snoop when oh, she... McGee? McGee, where are you? Oh, oh, caught in the act. I better put this stuff back in here fast. Hmm, this must be the new belt I've been hunting, I've been hinting about. I hope this is a fountain pen. If this isn't a sweater, McGee, I'll... McGee, where are you? What are you doing? I'm trying to get the door closed on the hall closet, Molly. It's so full of stuff, it's sprung open. Aha! I got it. <laughs> that was quick thinking, McGee, old man. If she ever caught you doing that stuff... Ooh, oh. Got to straighten out that closet right after Christmas. McGee, what goes on here? I told you to stay away from that hall closet. You're much too snoopy. Why, Molly, do you mean to stand there in one of the best-looking house dresses I ever saw <laughs> and accuse your own husband by marriage of snoopy? <laughs> ah, dearie, you can pump up more phony indignation than Donald Duck. Now get all that stuff put back in the closet. No, you better let me do it. Something in there you don't want me to see, baby? Well, if there was and I didn't and you already had, what's the difference? I didn't unwrap a thing. I never even shook anything. Only thing that even aroused my curiosity is that big white package with the blue ribbon on it. I don't remember any big white package with any blue... 
McGee, stop peering over my shoulder. Yeah. Go read the paper. Okay, but gee whiz. Back oh, hello, Alice. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hiya, Mr. McGee. Hi, Alice. Hey, what'd you do to your hair? Huh? Well, she's just wearing it differently, McGee. Himself here is getting very observant with Christmas coming on, Alice. <laughs> Ordinarily, you could wear your scalp full of neon lights and he'd never notice it. <laughs> you like my hair with the buns over the ears, Mr. McGee? Yes, I do, kid. I like the buns over the ears much better than that old sweet roll on top. <laughs> Or that apple strudel you used to have falling down in back. <laughs> My hairdresser says they're wearing it this way in Paris now. It's a nice hairdo, Alice. What do they call it? Hair Hitler. <laughs> because, because it's more trouble than it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think so, too. You got your Christmas conversation all done, Alice? Creepers, I thought I had, Mr. McGee, but now I'm as confused as a kangaroo at a pickpocket's convention. Why, dear? Well... I had a terrific billfold for Harold, but I had to change the tag to Ronnie because I'm giving Ronnie's cufflinks to Rick to take the place of Rick's cigarette lighter because I quick had to give the lighter to Jimmy when he showed up here last night with a simply super pair of earrings for me. <laughs> that is a little complicated, isn't it? <laughs> That's like the year when McGee gave me nothing but napkins and handkerchiefs, pillowcases and tablecloths for Christmas. He took the laundry list downtown instead of the shopping list. <laughs> Well, gee whiz, honey. You know, Alice, we're not doing very much for Christmas this year. The Treasury Department had beat Santa Claus down the chimney. Well, I told all the boys not to spend their money foolishly on things for me this year. I told them all to take whatever money they intended to spend on me and put it in war bonds. Good for you, Alice. Use the boys' dough to back up the dough boys. Mm, certainly. <laughs> anyway, I just assumed they gave me war bonds as anything else. <laughs> Got to get back to the post office. Goodbye. Uh, there's a girl who has her heart in the right place, on her sleeve. <laughs> uh, I don't know. She's a lot like I was when I was a girl, McGee. Except that she has twenty boyfriends and I just had you. Yeah, well, that wasn't because you were unpopular, Snooky. That was because there was an ugly rumor around Peoria that <laughs> McGee had put a bear trap in Molly Driscoll's porch swing. That was more than a rumor, sweetheart. For 15 years after that, my father never sat down without first slapping the chair with his cane. <laughs> now listen, go away while I get this stuff back in the closet. How about that white package with the blue ribbon on it? McGee, I swear I know absolutely nothing about that. <laughs> you wouldn't kid me, would you? <laughs> After all, when mysterious packages are hid away in the closet... Heavenly days, what was that? My belt. <laughs> it busted. Remember how I've been telling you my belt was on its last legs? Well, it's a funny place to wear a belt. <laughs> but I do remember your mentioning it several times. Mm, looked awful, too. Supposed to have been genuine calf, but I'll bet a cookie its mother was a paper mill. <laughs> Doggone it, my last belt, too. Oh, well, I can wear a necktie on my waist so I can get downtown and buy a new one. All right, dearie, all right. You win. Here, open this package. Why, this is a Christmas package. Gee, I shouldn't open this till Christmas. Open it. Well, okay. Well, what do you know? A new belt. <laughs> well, I'll be a monkey's uncle if this isn't a coincidence. Remember me to your nephew. <laughs> Gee. <laughs> With my initials on the buckle. Oh, this is a beauty, Molly. Thanks ever so much. Don't mention it and Merry Christmas. First installment. <laughs> my gosh, this is really unexpected. Well, it shouldn't be. <laughs> the way you've been talking about a new belt the past few weeks, you should have taken out a hinting license. <laughs> Here, throw this old one away, will you? All right, I'll put it in... Why, this is strange. Huh? Looks like it had been cut halfway through. Oh, well, I've had a very sharp appetite lately, and my waist... <laughs> Come in. Hello, Molly. Hello, Gary. Hello, Dr. Gamble. Hi, you big front man for the stork club. <laughs> Why call me Gary? You finally agree with me that I look like Cooper? No, that's just my abbreviation for garrulous. Why, Dr. McGee is not garrulous. I should say not. I haven't been out with a girl since I married Molly. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I know. You two are the living exhibit A for the scientific theory of the attraction of opposites. Molly is so good-looking and sweet and quiet. And I'm 
Yes, indeed, in spades. <laughs> Say, what's all this Christmas stuff around here? You have been unwrapping a present, McGee? Well, he just broke his belt, Doctor. And as long as I was giving him one for Christmas, I thought he might as well have it now. Mm, beauty, ain't it, Doc? Real pigskin. I shall not descend to any of the obvious retorts, my boy. It is a very handsome hunk of haberdashery. But aren't you a little ashamed of accepting your gifts now? According to my calendar, it's several days until Christmas. Well, I was just trying to keep up his spirits and his pants for the next week, Doctor. <laughs> what do you use for a calendar, Doc? Cut a notch in a patient for each day of the week? No, no, I just glance in the mirror. If I seem to have aged ten years, I know another day has crept by. You know, you ought to go away for a good long rest, Doctor. Some place where you can't get near a telephone. Like any drugstore. <laughs> Don't think I wouldn't love it, my dear, but I've got to stick around for the Christmas rush. What Christmas rush? You running a black market in pink pills? No. No, but us cowtown pastors expect certain seasonal phenomena about this time of year. <laughs> like kids swallowing Christmas tree ornaments. Selfish little animals that they are, an ornament so hard to get. <laughs> and then, too, digital callosity is almost an annual epidemic. Heavenly days, what on earth is digital callosity? Calluses on the fingers. Oh. From people rubbing them over greeting cards to see if they're really engraved. Oh. <laughs> well, it's nice to have you drop in, Doctor. Particularly without McGee starting an argument with you. Now, just a darn minute. <laughs> whom starts all the arguing with whom? Doc always starts them, not me. Oh, now, don't give us that, little Sir Decibel. You're as bad-tempered as a dime store jackknife, and you know it. I don't know any such a dirty thing. <laughs> Just because you always start snarling at me with your big, fat teeth don't mean I got a bad temper. Why, you peripatetic little biological aberration, you have the neurological reactions of a schizophrenic troglodyte. <laughs> King's X. What do you mean, King's X? Doc, don't play fair. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> well, I'll call it off till I look up some one-syllable words, McGee. <laughs> anyway, I've got to get back to my office. It's probably full of expectant fathers. Expectant fathers? Yes, they expect me to tell them beforehand whether to have the nursery decorated in pink or blue. <laughs> what do you tell them, Doc? I give them an evasive answer. I tell them to go fry a pig. Well, Merry Christmas, folks. Thank you, Doctor. Same to you. And a Happy New Year, Doc. Isn't he a sweet old character? Yeah, great guy. It was a great loss to medicine when he started studying it. <laughs> <laughs> what a patient he'd have been. Say, I wonder if it was he who sent us the big white package with the blue ribbon on it. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> you don't have to play coy with me, Tootsie. I wasn't born yesterday. Well, you might as well have been. You're so changeable. <laughs> now, if you'll, uh... <laughs> McGee, if you'll go away someplace while I straighten up this closet. I'll run over to Kramer's drugstore. I gotta buy a new fountain pen. Oh, no, 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 McGee. Don't do that. Huh? Why not? Well, I... I was... Well, why do you need a new fountain pen just this minute? Can't you use your old one? My old one? I only got one. Well, I meant... Well, what's the matter with it? Well, the point is pigeon-toed. <laughs> <laughs> Writes two lines instead of one. But maybe you'll get... When I registered with it at a hotel last summer, the clerk looks at my signature and says, You gentlemen want twin beds? <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead and fix the closet, kiddo. I'll run over to Kramer's and oh, get Oh, dear. You win again, McGee. Here. Open this package. What do you mean? Go ahead. Open it. Well, Okay. Well, I'll be a, a new fountain pen. Gee, thanks, kid. Oh, this is wonderful. Merry Christmas. Second installment. <laughs> Boy, this is a wonderful pen. Just the kind I wanted, too. And just when I needed it. Why, you could knock me over with a feather, Molly. I never dreamed you... Hey, what, what are you looking for? A feather. <laughs> Billy Mills and the orchestra and Jingle Bell.
me, McGee. I've almost got this closet straightened up again. How about that big white package with the blue ribbon on it? D- does it gurgle or rattle or squeak or anything? Well, I haven't touched it. Somebody around here's got to keep his curiosity under control. And as long as there's only two of us, it looks like I'm elected. Hey, this is a wonderful pen you gave me, Molly. You like it, dearie? It's marvelous. Only one thing wrong with it that I can see. My goodness, what's that? I just worked a crossword puzzle with it, and it don't spell very good. (laughs) That isn't a pen, that's the ink. Oh. (laughs) Well, I'm really quite gruntled with it. You mean disgruntled? No, I'm very happy. It's the finest pen I... Hello, friends. Hello there, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, a waxy old man. How do you like the new belt Molly gave me for Christmas? Hey, it's beautiful. But aren't you folks a little previous with your Christmas presents? Well, he was getting so snoopy, Mr. Wilcox, I just had to give him a belt one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the easy way. Look, she, she gave me a fountain pen, too. Ain't that a darb? Writes 10,000 words without filling. <laughs> Don't know how many he'll write when I fill it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you get it, kids? I says it right there. Ain't funny, McGee. <laughs> I thought it had a kind of a funny taint. <laughs> you like the pen, Junior? It's very handsome, pal. But uh, better get your name engraved on it. Be ashamed to lose a nice pen like that. Well, I couldn't get it engraved till after Christmas, Mr. Wilcox. I took it to seven different jewelers, too. Gee, did you really, Molly? Yes, and I got quite an inferiority complex. Leaning over $80,000 worth of diamond necklaces... Trying to get a $3 job of engraving done? (laughs) Well, gee, you should have taken it to my cousin, Big Bill Wilcox, on Oak Street, Molly. One of the finest engravers in the country. I thought all the really great engravers were working for the government, Waxy. Oh, he used to. In Washington? No, Leavenworth. (laughs) That's why they call him Big Bill. He got caught making 20s out of 10s. (laughs) They put him to work making little ones out of big ones for making big ones out of little ones, eh? (laughs) Yeah, he's a terrific engraver, though. He's a... Well, here, wait a minute, here. Take a look at this common, ordinary little pin. Well, what about it? Well, look at the head of it. Kind of scratched up, isn't it, Junior? Ha, ha, ha. Look at it through this magnifying glass, which I just happen to have with me. Uh-oh. Well, heavenly days. Isn't that marvelous? Let me look at it. Well, I'm a son of a gun. What does it say, Junior? Can't quite read it without my glasses. It says you don't have to be sharp as a pin to know that Johnson's self-polishing glow coat is the finest beautifier and protector of linoleum. Imagine writing all that on the head of a pin. Oh, there's more than that. It says if you're stuck with faded worn linoleum, bring it back to life and beauty with Johnson's glow coat to polish the chines as it dries. My gosh, he is quite an engraver, isn't he, Waxy? Well, you know, the funny part of it is, it only took him 20 minutes or less to do it. Oh, that's too much. Same length of time it takes for a glow... <laughs> For glow coat to dry to a mirror-like finish on your linoleum. Now, wasn't that a coincidence? Amazing. Here, let me put the pin back in your lapel, Mr. Wilcox. Right. I'm afraid it might get lost. Oh, and... ouch. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's your story, Junior, and you got stuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, let me take your fountain pen, pal. I'll have Big Bill engrave it for you. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Thanks, Junior. Don't mention it. I'll have it back Friday. Okay. <laughs> ah, isn't he a sweet old... Oh, no, that's Dr. Gamble. <laughs> Look, Molly, no kidding. That big white package with the blue ribbon on it. Is that for me? I tell you, I don't know a thing about it, McGee. Cross your heart? Cross my heart. Well, my gosh, somebody must have... Hey, maybe Beulah put it there. Oh, Beulah. Hey, Beulah. You call me Miss McGee? (laughs) Why should I? You never call me Beulah. (laughs) Mr. McGee wanted to know about this big white package with a blue ribbon on it, Beulah. Did you put it in the closet here, Beulah? No, sir. That package is a complete stranger to me. (laughs) Well, that's strange. Oh, well, we'll find out when we open it at Christmas time. Have you got all your shopping done, Beulah? Yes, ma'am. Practically. (laughs) All I got left to get stuff for is Papa and Ira. Ira? (laughs) Who's Ira? (laughs) Uh He's my one and only, sir. At least, at least he's one of the few and far between I bet he's the FBI man Oh, heavenly days Federal Bureau of Investigation? No, ma'am, friendly but ignorant <laughs> What does he do, Beulah? He's the insurance man, sir mm-hmm. Yeah, sir, he specializes in life insurance with double indignity <laughs> Indemnity Yes, ma'am, only he may have to give it up on account of a greeting card he got this morning On account of a greeting card? Yes, sir You say, from the President of the United States, greeting <laughs> What's his present status, Beulah? Five foot nine and a half in his socks, ma'am No, no, no <laughs> No, how is he classified now? I classify him as ready and willing, sir. 
So he suffered with flat feet and astigmatism. Tis him. Oh, yes, tis, ma'am. <laughs> he's so short-sighted, he don't know his best friend across a taffy pool. <laughs> well, they don't pull taffy in the Army anyway, Beulah. He'll be okay if he can see well enough to pull a sergeant's leg. Yes, that's what I mean. <laughs> Love that man. <laughs> hey, Molly. I think we ought to open up that package. I think it must have been delivered by mistake. Well, it might have been at that, McGee. There's no tag on it or anything. You think we ought to? Well, I don't... Yes, know. I think we ought to. One side, baby. I'll soon solve this mystery. Well, if you really... Heavenly days, it's a beautiful negligee. A negligee? Oh, my gosh. What's the matter? Oh, gee whiz. Oh, my... That was my present for you, baby. I bought it a month ago and forgot all about it. If I ain't the dumbest bunny Oh, now, ever... McGee, I think it's lovely. Oh. And just what I wanted, it's the most... Oh, now, who... Come in. Hi, mister. We're all ready. Ready? Who's all ready? For what? Kenny and Johnny and Buddy and Reddy and me. Huh? We're all ready to sing. Come on in, kids. Hey, Hello, Hello. Hello. Well, Folks, three years ago, Ken Darby of our King's Men... Wrote for our Christmas show an original musical setting for the poem, "'Twas the Night Before Christmas." Everyone seemed to like it so well that we've been asked to do it ever Christmas since. And we're glad to do it again tonight. Okay, Mr. McGee. Go on. Sit down now. Okay. You and, you and Miss McGee sit in a circle. You sit at the piano, Kenny. Ready, everybody? A one, and a two, and a three. <laughs>
but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings. Oh, boy. <laughs> then turned with a jerk. Then laying a finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rolled. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team, gave a whistle, and away they all flew. Like the down of a pistol, but I heard him exclaim, and he draws a sigh. Merry Christmas to all, and to all, good night. Oh, Christmas and all through the house, not a creature is stirring, not even the mouse. The presents are scattered and broken, I fear, and St. Nicholas won't come again for a year. The children are nestled all warm in their wee little beds, while memories of sugar plums dance in their wee little heads. Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap are settled at last for a long. Ladies and gentlemen, 2,000 years ago, a star shone over Bethlehem to light the way to peace and goodwill on earth. Tonight, that star is reflected in the windows of millions of your homes. So our Christmas wish to all of you is that the men and women who have gone out to fulfill the promise of that symbol may soon return. Mission accomplished. Good night. Good night, all. Exclaim and he drove out of sight. Merry Christmas to all and to all. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.